dealing with the bishop was refreshing, to say the least, in terms of uh, not having the, uh, the intensity of uh, a for, for profit organization. Although, by the same token, we do have to manage our resources as limited as they are. So, uh, we used to meet periodically, and uh, uh, it was just uh, never a problem to say exactly what I wanted to say to the bishop. Uh, and I found conversations with him to be very open, very frank, uh, stimulating at times, humorous at times, just, uh, I, he's just a fun person to work with. Bishop Braxton and I, um, I became familiar with Bishop Braxton uh, roughly uh, three, three and a half years ago, uh, whenever he uh, became, he was a patient at our hospital, and I was honored and willing to usher him and lead him around, make sure his care was taken care of and so forth. Um, and then from there, we've just built a relationship um, over the past three years. I was born and raised a Catholic and uh, never really got close or familiar to a, uh, with a bishop until just recently. His knowledge and his memory is just amazing. Uh, he sees me frequently here, but did not see my wife very often, and he still remembers my wife. Just recently, we are members at St. Peter and Paul Catholic Church in uh, Waterloo, and our children go to St. Peter and Paul Catholic School. And our youngest boy, Tyler, uh, was had confirmation. And after the confirmation ceremony was over, we went over to the cafeteria, and he remembered me right away from St. Elizabeth's and remembered my wife. Uh, it's just uh, very personal. My, my fondest memory is the first time we actually were invited to his to the bishop's house. Um, uh, we were a little nervous, uh, never, never uh, being invited to a, uh, an event like this. And it was so, so much of a home feeling, you know, there was, it was nothing, you know, to be nervous about actually after, after it's all said and done. My impression of the bishop is um, that he is, um, detail-oriented, he is focused, he is a teacher, always always a teacher, and uh, he, ha he has high expectations, and, and I mean that, I mean that in the best sense. He, he doesn't ask anything of us that, that he's not willing to do himself. Uh, one, one of the, the uh, mantras that he has is, learn your faith, love your faith, live your faith. That, that's, that's kind of his mantra. What I think that means is he wants us to know to know as much as we possibly can about our faith, so to learn as much as we can, but not for it to stay in our head, that it touches our hearts as well. Bishop Braxton tries to convey to us in, in being always the teacher is that he wants us not only to be the best Catholic that we can be, but he wants us to be the best human being that we can possibly be. It's been a, an instance of breast cancer. Uh, it, it turned out to be uh, uh, a bit cancer, but completely removed. But uh, in my dealings with the bishop, which are daily, his first question was always, and how is she? How is before the, the, the matters of the day, before the cathedral mass, before the homily we're working on, uh, before a, a, a paper that's going out, how is she doing? That was always the first question. Um, and that is... Uh, yeah, for a lot of people in the work world, their bosses don't ask that question first. Uh, I've been particularly impressed in the past uh, six months by the bishop's uh, statements on the racial divide in the United States. Um, no other Catholic bishop in the United States has spoken uh, so clearly uh, and at, at such great length and, and, and depth about this, which the bishop calls the racial divide. He doesn't call it racism. The, the, the point of his, his talks, his letters, is not to point blame, but to say there is this racial divide. Uh, it's uh, among the people of the United States, and we have to admit, it's among Christians. But uh, Bishop Braxton has, uh, has tackled that subject, which is not easy and has done it with, uh, I think, fairness and uh, with some, uh, some insight that's uh, very valuable for uh, Christians 
uh, in the United States. Well, I've found him to be very thoughtful about things. I find that he often um, is much more concerned about the people that he works with than perhaps they understand. He doesn't jump to conclusions. Uh, when people bring him information, he only wants first hand, no second hand. So I've learned that I cannot tell him. I heard that, makes, that means nothing if I did not see or observe. And uh, that makes a lot of difference. Um, he doesn't deal with hearsay. But he's very much an academic. I think we all recognize that. That is certainly his, his strength. And uh, that's where it makes a little difference, I think, his style, as opposed to his, the previous bishop, who was not, I won't say he was not an academic, but not in the same way, you know. And even going back to the bishop, my first bishop that I remember, Bishop Zurawest, who was a native son, and, uh, you know, from a family of politicians, all of this played into how he exercised. So, to me, it's just it's another style of being bishop that I have been able to observe, and I guess being sort of on the inside, I get to see the, the good parts of it, um, and I you know, I see sometimes where he's criticized. It's well, frankly, it's just not true, but they're speaking from what they know, and the fact is they don't know. He he, he will focus. He has a very good focus about things, and when you become the focus, and it's for a good reason, it really strikes you because you know anything else could have been the focus that day. Along that same track, then, I digress beautifully, you'll see. But um, I've learned not to, if I, if I know what he's focused on that day, I don't bring anything else to him. It's not worth it. He, is he, he stays where he is, and he wants to, to get that cleared first before we move on to something else. But he, is, he shows concern. The number of times that he's called people when they've had a death in the family, and when I hear from these families later, how surprised they were, and it, it's a different side of uh, him. I thought at first he just did it routinely, but, but it's not. It's done deliberately, and and he he'll look for some contact with that person before he calls them, uh, so he has understands the circumstances. Uh, it just takes a concern that I don't often observe in a lot of people.